Hello, welcome to Geeky Hijinks, Home and Bishop Makers, and today, we're looking at Candisha. So guys, another week, another shot of film, but I am a little bit behind with work commitments going on holiday. So there are a few shot of films I need to catch up on, starting with Candisha. Now, if you wonder what Candisha is about, I'll tell you. So the film is about best friends, Emily, Bintu and Morjana, who hang out together with the neighborhood teenagers. But when Emily is assaulted by her ex, she remembers the story of Kandisha, a powerful and vengeful demon. And the next day, her ex is found dead. The legend is true and now Kandisha is on a killing spree. And the girls have to do all they can to break the curse. Now all across the world, each country has their own sort of urban legend. So you've got things like Lady in White, Bigfoot, the Chupacabra, La Llorona, James Corden, etc. And Kandisha is no different. Kandisha is actually a Moroccan urban legend. These days used more to scare kids to go to bed early. If you don't go to bed early, Kandisha's gonna get you. But back in the day, she was more used as a story to scare off soldiers. So in Morocco's past, where there was plenty of wars, where people tried to invade Morocco, Kandisha was a freedom fighter who would seduce any soldier, any person coming into her village to do harm to her people. She would sleep with them, one way to do it, and then kill them. And she'll do that one at a time to the point where the soldiers are like, screw this, no pun intended, and left the village. So she was like, yay, Kandisha, Kandisha, Kandisha's here to save us. She killed so many soldiers, apparently, people didn't think she was human. Now, this film takes dramatic liberties, like most films do with urban legends, but in this film, she is killed by six soldiers eventually, and she sells her soul beforehand to the devil. So if she is summoned by a female, she would then go after six guys, even if she just wants one dead, she nicks six souls before she'll go back to sleep. And that's kind of what this film does, takes the Kandisha urban legend, tweaks it a little bit, and it might upset a few people, but it didn't bother me. So, what I like about this film. Now this film is set in France, so subtitles will be needed, but that first shot where the camera is just swooping, like just going through this French estate, it looks so, so good. I was actually impressed, I was like, this film, it looks really, really good. The directors clearly know how to film a movie, clearly know how to make a horror movie. So future ventures by them, I'm looking forward to. But that's one thing that caught me off guard from the very, very beginning was how good the film looked. Now, Kandisha was pretty good as an antagonist. Now, Shadow films usually get this wrong. Normally anything demonic, supernatural, doesn't look good. Like, they, they're more scary when they're not seen, which I've mentioned plenty of times before. And when you first see Kandisha, you can say the same, you're like, oh, that was a bit underwhelming. But her presence from the rest of the film, from her first appearance, is very good. As she's pursuing these males in the film, it reminded me of The Mummy where he was just relentless, he would find them, he would kill them, he would take their souls, and Kandisha's the same. But there is one scene with Kandisha where she's holding this guy up in the air, and my body went cold. She looks completely different. It's like she transformed into this demon and it caught me so off guard. I got the chills. I had to rewind it because I was just like, I was so shocked. And it's insanely creepy the way she looks when she's in this demon form. So yeah, very impressed with the antagonist. Nothing special. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying she's the little best. Like she's Michael Myers. Or... She's not like that at all. But for a Shudder film, very good. And the kills are pretty good too. Nothing over the top in regards to gore, nothing original in regards to deaths, but still good, like the practical effects for these deaths are pretty good. There's one guy that gets thrown off a balcony and his death was pretty cool. One guy gets his bones smushed into pieces. The guy that gets hoisted up gets the worst out the lump. There is one death though that was just like, oh my God, that's, that's terrible. But generally, impressed with the deaths. And I'll touch on the characters. Nothing special. They're good, like they're fun characters. You're with them. They're not bad actors at all. They're actually pretty entertaining. Although the age differences between them is very jarring because one looks like about 16, one looks like my age, I'm um, 22. And the rest of them, yeah, some of the characters when they died, one death I'll touch on in a second, the one that made me go, oh no. They look the same. <laughs> Um, because they both have beards, and I was like, oh, this guy died, wait a second, why are you still alive? And I had this problem with, um, oh, the lockdown hauntings, where so many people died because they were blonde women, but it looked all the same, and I couldn't tell who died. And there's just two dudes with beards, and they're kind of like plain Janes, so they don't stand out as characters, so when one of them dies, you're just like, ah, uh, 
like, okay. So yeah, the characters, you're on their side, but they are bare bones basic at best. Now I'm gonna to touch on that one death, and it's not necessarily the death, it's kind of some parts of the film, it's the CGI. This one death involving fire was awful. This guy basically gets burned alive. And it's not good, like, not good effects. I like someone like me could do better fire effects on YouTube, like this. Ow. Also, Emily, I know you're attacked by your ex. Douchebag move, he deserves to have his dick chopped off. But my first move, if I was in your shoes, wouldn't be to go home and wipe my bloody hand on the wall, make a pentagram, and call for a demonic entity to come and kill that person because I don't know, well, what's, that, what's that thing called? It's a device and it's got numbers on and you press three of them and these guys come and they um, take people away and put them in these rooms that have like bars in them for a long time. Um, yeah, like I would have called those dudes first before I would have gone for the whole bloody <laughs> like summoning demon thing, but yeah, um, to each their own. Overall guys, this film is pretty good. Like if a random guy came up to me in the street and was like, hey Joe, and I'm like, hey random guy, what's condition like? It's pretty good, you should go watch it. That's what I'd say to him. And I'd say the same thing to you. Is it original? No, but the fact is set in France with a unique urban legend. The characters are good, if not a little bit bland. It's got some cool deaths. And I like Candisha, like very ominous, very daunting. And that one little moment, which is holding that poor dude up from the, from the floor, it's pretty horrifying. Yeah, it's got some long moments, a lot of tropes, and it's got some bad CGI at times. But generally, this is a fun film, and I reckon you should go watch it. You won't be disappointed. But if you are, don't blame me. I'm just like, giving my own opinion. But on that note, I'm going to give Candisha three out of five geeky coins. It also gets a one time spin and a mobile moan. So guys, that was my review of Kandisha. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Was it a snooze fest? Or the greatest film you've ever seen? Come right to the comments to let me know because I genuinely am interested. And if you like this video, drop me a like because it always does help. But until next time, stay out of trouble.